So without any further ado, I want to jump right in and uh, introduce our first panelist. The, the actual details of the, the bios are on the back of your page, which saves me a good amount of time. So I'm going to let, we're going to do it in this approximate order. Kate, where's Kate? Just going to jump in. Kate, why don't you go ahead and uh, set up for a second. Um, the general idea is that we're going to each, each person is going to speak for about um, under 10 minutes, um, hopefully uh, as short as possible. And the idea is to be provocative, get some ideas out there, and then we're going to, just as we did in the last panel, we'll, have, we'll open it up for discussion <coughs> and, uh, and debate. So please uh, pr provide provocative questions, we really welcome those. And um, away we go. Um, I want to thank uh, the organizers and the previous panelists, as well as the talks this morning and the talks to come. It's been a really exciting conversation, and I'm really, um, I feel really grateful to be here. Um, so we're just going to finish the technical difficulties. Luckily, the topic of my discussion is, uh, is drone failure. And so the technological failure sets us up well for thinking about the potentials and possibilities. Um, I really enjoyed the previous panelists this morning because they presented the problem of technological optimism and the way in which sort of simply taking technology and a positivistic way of continuously becoming better, the sort of challenges that are presented by this. Um, and in my work, um, I'm going to talk a little bit about the various practices that I have in relation to drone technologies, but I'm really going to foreground the question of drone failure rather than the success or the panoptics of drones in order to think about what it means to imagine drones in this kind of opposite way as, as the system that is continuously crashing continuously in failure, and that that's just as much a part of its technological development as the sort of optics, the panoptics that it's associated with. And luckily, I think we just managed to get through the technological failure. <laughs> and we can start with the drones and their crash history. Um, I'm going to present two sections uh, today. The first part is a little overview of some of the artistic interventions that I've done through the idea of drone crashes. And the second part is some of the history of drone crashes, which draws on some of my dissertation research. And I just want to sort of point to some of the ways in which my dissertation research works um, to think about how that relates to the previous panels and how this can sort of transition us into these creative, these creative resistances that sort of form this panel. Um, and my project is organized around two different optics, the optics of targeting and the optics of surveillance. And I look at how these emerge um, in various different historical moments, starting with the name drone, which was a code name given to remotely controlled pilotless aircraft in 1936. And I work up into the present. And again, the other thing that I'm trying to do here is a lot of the discussions today have sort of rightly focused on the, the technological <coughs> challenges that we face today. And by contextualizing them in a, a longer history, I think we can uncover some of the ways in which these optics and these technological innovations are part of a longer, longer trajectory. And that may also provide some of the ways in which we can creatively resist these, um, these, these technologies. So a sort of general question of how does, how does failure change how drones are addressed in contemporary debates? And again, we can think about the optics of drones specifically, and we can think about some of the, the technological failures that were referred to in the, in the previous section. And I'm just going to take us through a series of drone crashes that have happened in the past six to eight months. So this is um, just in February. White Sands National Monument closed because of a drone crash. U.S. Border Patrol drone crashes off of California coast. This was in January. It's widely publicized. $12 million drone crashed after a mechanical problem. Drone crash at Tyndall, U.S. 98 to be closed until midday thir Thursday. This was in Florida in uh, July. Uh, drone worth millions crashes into Lake Ontario, military says. This is in November. <laughs> Israeli drone crashes on the blue line with Lebanon, and again, there's some questions about what exactly happened in this particular drone crash. Two injured when drone malfunctions and crashes into a Navy ship. Uh, this happened uh, in November. 
U.S. drone crashes in Yemen. This is from January 21, 2014. So I wanted to just show you a series of contemporary drone crashes. Um, oh, one more. Navy report on Maryland drone crash. Disastrous results revert, averted. Before I get to the drone crash that I most recently participated in. So, um, well, there were sort of, I, I wanted to contextualize the sort of drone crash that I produced to mention that there are a number of actual drone crashes, and they, they aren't just drone crashes on college campuses in San Diego as an art hoax. And so this I did in December of uh, 2012 with collaborators Ricardo Dominguez and Ian Paul, and we staged a sort of drone crash which was released to the San Diego media and widely reported on. And what I've sort of set out here is I want to think about the possibilities of the drone crash as a way of engaging the sort of technologies of surveillance. Um, and so let me just quickly really read what we released in the press release that went along with this. <coughs> um, and so this was um, reported, um, we set up a website, it was the UC Center for Drone Policy and Ethics. So this was posted on the UC Center for Drone Policy and Ethics website. We understand that the recent drone crash incident has caused alarm among students and staff surrounding the research and use of drones on the UCSD campus and surrounding areas, and very much wanted to take this opportunity to educate the public about drone technologies and local deployments. While drone crashes are rare and other malfunction is extremely unlikely, we at the UC Center for Drone Policy and Ethics would also like to take this opportunity to teach basic drone safety techniques that can be practiced on a daily basis to keep ourselves and others safe. So we, we uh, had a sort of performance town hall meeting that I participated in actually via Skype. Um, and I'm going to show some of the material that I talked about in that performance, which was an archive of sort of drone crashes to think about this, this genealogy of drone crashes as something that has c occurred continuously w alongside drones. But let me just quickly mention one other performance um, that I participated in. And this was uh, done at Artist Television Access in San Francisco, and we did a piece called Arbona's Drone Report, which was a military sales pitch, and I played the role of the person selling the military technologies, and it was a degenerating PowerPoint presentation. And so this is one of the degenerating PowerPoint slides that we sort of presented where I'm selling the Gorgon Stair technologies, and what I indicate is the sort of amount of money that's going to the Air Force budget for drones, the cost of the Reaper drone, which you also saw in the previous slides, you know, crashing for about $12 million, and uh, in the Iraqi war, um, the most recent one, it was revealed in 2007 that the Iraqis were using a, um, a, a, technology, a technology called Skygrabber, which was actually used to watch satellite television for free. So basically the technology was able to, to receive satellite transmissions on your computer. And through this, they were able to um, also watch what, the, what information was being transmitted to drones. And so this was widely reported on. It was, it was in um, a 60 Minutes article and it showed up in numerous, numerous magazines. And we can think about how US military drones were hacked with software that cost $25.95. And again, this, it's this dynamics of failure that I'm, that I'm interested in. Um, so one of the techniques, aesthetic techniques, that I think um, is part of failure and um, part of what I'm interested in aesthetically, and I'd like to explore some with the panel, is the idea of contrapuntal aesthetics, right? What, what happens when one thing is being said and something else is being done? What is happening uh, in the relationship, uh, the discontinuities between text and image? Um, and how does that play into notions of surveillance? And how does that, um, that also potentially challenge notions of surveillance? OK, so I only have two minutes, so we're going to have to go really quickly here. Um, but um, what I want to quickly point out is that while stories about technologies are often told as narratives of progress, one is invited to marvel at pr improvements charting out incremental changes that make contemporary technologies smarter, faster, stronger, in short, better. 
Um, they are at the same time based on these series of challenges. And we might also think about how these same technologies have been imagined for a very long time. And I briefly want to, in thinking about drones, um, read from you a article from 1915, published December 8th, 1915, by Nikola Tesla. And it, the headline read, Tesla's new device like bolts of Thor. Um, and in this, Tesla writes his vision for a new weapon of war, what he called a teleautomaton. And he said through wireless control, it will be possible to, quote, direct an ordinary aeroplane, manless, to any point over a ship or an army and to discharge explosives of great strength from the base of operations. Almost 100 years later, Tesla's proposal seems prescient, but what I'm sort of showing you in the interim are all of the failures that have sort of led up, led up to this. And so during the period between 1915 and 2001, there's a huge history of failed drone projects, which are the sort of basis of my dissertation. And I'm pointing to some of the materials here. Um, I'm going to pause this. There's numerous other flights in 1919, and there's also a section of video from 1944, but I want to bring us to the Cold War version. Um, and this, we'll just watch for a moment. Um, this is a Ryan Firebee drone. Oh, do we have sound? Hold on just a moment, you really need the sound. <laughs> Don't worry, they keep crashing. Uh, this was made by the company that produced the drones, so... If we have learned nothing throughout the history of our developmental work, our engineering department has learned very well how to bury their mistakes. <laughs> the reference to 2001 Space Odyssey and of course the moment of technological triumph and the tool being completely reversed through the idea of failure and sort of as we discuss this I want to invite us to think what does it mean to view the drone as this crashed, broken, failed technology and how would that change the terms of the debates which we're talking about today. Thank you very much.